My name is Suzanne Taylor, and I'm here, 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 everywhere, to wake up. Well, so are you. You know why? Because there's a little reminder. I like to have reminders. Uh, it says, one little thing led to another, and the next thing I knew I was dead. Well, so what are you going to do, you know? You're going to just waste it? Not me. Um, the nice thing about what's happening right now is that it seems to be time that we could be waking up together. I mean, it just seems to be time to do that. We've done a lot of stuff to wake ourselves up privately. Well, what I'm here to do is talk to us about how we're going to kind of pass it back and forth and be awake together. And what we're going to be doing is talking about what being awake is. Uh, I personally have always had a lot of enthusiasm. You know, enthusiasm comes from uh, the Greek words entheos, and it means spirit-filled or the God within. Obviously, that's all about excellence too, right? I mean, if you're full of spirit, you're just full of wanting things to be absolutely the best they can be. Uh, the happiest day in my life actually was when I made cheerleader in high school. Here's me. You want to see? Oh, was I proud. I finally could cheer about things officially, you know. I could get enthusiastic in the days when it was actually more proper to be cool, which never turned me on at all. Well, I was enthusiastic about just about everything all my life, except I didn't know what to be enthusiastic, what was worth being enthusiastic about. So I got good at a lot of strange things. Well, I was real good in school. I mean, if you put it in front of me, I got 100. In fact, when I graduated from high school, I was in so many activities that they couldn't fit it on my page in the yearbook. I mean, I worked four years to get all those credits cut. Then, when I got out of school, that was really puzzling. I mean, nobody seemed to be cheering about anything. So I got good at uh, things like um, blackjack. Well, they came out with a system. I mean, they ran it up on a computer. So I learned it. I used to have my chips piled up in the dining room table where I would practice. And my little two-year-old daughter would come by and say, mustn't touch mommy's toys. I got good at cooking also. I wrote a little cookbook. But somehow or other, it didn't seem to be satisfying. Until finally I figured out what there was to be good at was life. I mean, that was the big game. Now, uh, I'm enthusiastic. I was cheerleader. I was a cosmic cheerleader. Uh, well, ah, now I get to be a cosmic cheerleader. Or I can really cheer about things that matter. Now, what is this waking up business? I mean, what is that all about? What is this life all about? I mean, what do I think it's all about? I'm sure you have your ideas. Uh, waking up is kind of the basic thing that's available for all of us. And I'm sure a lot of you who are watching me, you know, certainly know a lot about that. Uh, I'll give you my version. Waking up to me is going from being concerned with yourself to being concerned with everything. It's going from... Uh, Oh, oh, from thinking that you're supposed to win to know personally to knowing that you don't win unless everybody wins. Uh, it's going from being fearful and nervous about whether you're going to make it to being ecstatic, knowing that there isn't any anything other than making it. And um, I here have finally got myself a restaurant. I've always wanted to have a restaurant, uh, except that most restaurants are pretty boring. I always wonder why people don't do interesting things at restaurants. Well, my intention is to have this restaurant be just full of the buzz of human life. And we're going to do a show from here every week. It's this show, and it's called The Cosmic Fuel Pump, where we hope to give you tidbits for uh, a delicious life, delicious gourmet tidbits. In fact, now that I am having this restaurant and this cosmic fuel pump, uh, I, in fact, am your little gourmet guru. Uh, and together, I hope we can stir up the pot to cook up a new civilization. I mean, it really needs to happen. What's out there doesn't work any too well.
Uh, it's time for a new understanding of human life and its setting on the earth. There's a wonderful article we'll talk about next week or the week after that has that heading. The, the understanding we're all walking around with, well, we, we really don't have much of an understanding. So let's talk about a new understanding, and that's what the cosmic fuel pump will be. All kinds of tidbits contributing to a new understanding of what the heck we're all doing here. Now, uh, the, uh, the tidbits are all going to be about they're sort of going to be about how-tos, how to live, how to love, how to find cosmic fuel pumps in your life. I mean, this can't be the only one. So we'll give you a lot of tips for how to fill your life with all the stuff that makes your life delicious uh, to reality. That's one of our big topics. It's a big word. Um, reality is kind of um, a word you can use in, in place of love, in place of God, in place of everything. Well, we'll talk a lot about reality today and other days. Um, so we're going to have these divine fill-ups here at your uh, cosmic fuel pump. And um, uh, let's talk about what this wake-up business is all about. I, I have a new title, another title for our wake-up business. Uh, perhaps uh, if I do a good job, we could think of me as the whiz of is. Reality is all about what is, you know. And no use fighting it. I mean, going against reality is one of the more futile pursuits in the universe. Because it, it will be there, regardless of what you want. Uh, now, let's talk about um, reality and isness and uh, being awake. Uh, when you're asleep, you think the world's about stuff, the world's about things, the world's about accomplishments. When you're awake, you know that it's about essence. It's about who you are, not what you are. It's about how you feel, not what you do. Uh, it, it's about love. It's about oneness. Uh, it's about peace. Instead of all the opposition and the separation and the things that make you feel rotten, when you're awake, you feel pretty good. You feel wonderful, in fact. Oh, ecstatic. I said that before. Uh, when you're awake, the world's about not how right you can be, but how loving you can be. I mean, it feels good steadily to be loving. It only feels good for a second to be right. And life's really about if you can get there. And why not? You know, remember one little thing led to another? We, we, we better pay attention. We better get there. Uh, so, so it's about staying in this place. Uh, it's about staying loving. It's about staying ecstatic. Uh, now, now, how do you do that? Well, I like to think of it as living the questions, living out of wondering what, 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 is, what, what is the best life? What does it take to make you happy? Um, here's some good questions. How can I feel loving all the time? How can I be most serving? We'll talk about service, a big topic. Uh, how can I have a heroic adventure? I mean, don't. Don't you think that as long as you're here, I mean, it may as well be hot stuff, you know? Do you want to be bored? I don't. I produced a project once um, called Challenge for Champions about gathering heroes. We had a theme song. It was, we're making it all up, so it might as well be wonderful. We're making it, making it. Well, a singer I'm not. I am only a whiz of is. Uh, maybe someday we'll have somebody come along and sing that song for you. A friend of mine named Wendy Barrett made it up. Uh, well, when you're awake, you also know that life is not only about, along with it being about feeling good, it's about feeling good together. I mean, look, we're in this together. And have you noticed? And you know, you know, you know that when your heart is flowing and someone else's heart is flowing back. You know that's just the best feeling. Uh, a little word that's being bandied about now is community. Community being us together and moving closer to one another so that we cherish community. So it's not just an accident who we happen to be with, but that we really pay attention to uh, the nature of our relationships and really get good at being uh, good with one another and good for one another. And 
We used to have community back in the old days, and gradually, as we got affluent, we moved into these little uh, private caves, and we got all our stuff around us, and, you know, we didn't have any more, not much love. So community is something that I have a spot in my heart for, and uh, we'll talk a lot about that on the show. Uh, separation, you know, is the original sin. Um, I, I get this picture sometimes. I think it's like I, I watch the world and I think, hmm, look at all those little machines. They get born and they make something and they die. And do they think that's all there is? Gosh, I don't, the ways it is doesn't think that's all there is. I mean, it has to be about how you feel, not what you do. And you better feel good. Uh, and being separate from one another, being self-contained in this little shell here, it's not the highest place. It's not the thing that feels good. You know, we're all made of this soul stuff inside. These little frames are just around our soul stuff. And all the soul stuff is all of us together. It's kind of oozing into one another. These boxes called bodies are just convenient so that we can uh, communicate. But really, there's no separation between us at the most essential level. And remember, essence is being awake. Being aware of essence is awake. And being aware of things only is asleep. Uh, so, uh, the, the, um, the picture that I've been having lately, it's funny, I get these pictures. It's almost like something's talking to me. The picture I've had lately, the latest message that talked to me, uh, was I have this picture of an intelligence and it's pressing to come in. It knows. It's been there all along. And what we're here to do is to receive it. We, we don't know. Uh, we start out not knowing. And gradually, we kind of, if we're, uh, if we're paying attention, you know, to one little moment after another, uh, gradually, this, um, and this intelligence fills us more and more until we become it and everyone else is becoming it. And then we're kind of in this wonderful dance together. And the intelligence is all about how to be awake. It's all about being in reality. It's all about feeling wonderful. It's all about being as ecstatic as we possibly can be. It's all about being the ultimate that we possibly can be. There's uh, another word in the air, which I'm sure most of you know, the transformation. They talk about the time when the whole planet will go from not knowing to knowing. Well, if we all got that there was this intelligence and it was around and it was the thing that would really make us feel wonderful. And if we all said, wow, why don't we turn our attention to bringing that intelligence in? All of us do that. We wouldn't have to know one more thing than just in common looking at the intelligence we would have the transformation. We would all be kind of working together, and that's what the transformation is all about. Um, when you get a glimpse of this reality, when, it, when, it, when a message starts to come to you, however it comes to you, I do believe thereafter you are a receiver. And I think all of us folks here who've had a little bit of a taste of this message are receivers. Uh, and we are collectively kind of writing this story. Um, my friend Kenny Mann said to me a couple of days ago, I'll read you what he said. He said, um, I was sitting down four days ago, and all of a sudden, I had this experience of being one with everything. It was a rush, a warm, wonderful rush. I wanted to smile at everybody and everything. And after that, his entire life changed. You know, we hung up from the telephone, and I, I corroborated that I thought, you know, that was exactly how I felt sometimes also, and I knew that that was what was important. When we hung up, from the telephone call. And he called me back and he said, you know what? I just got a flash. Well, that's the intelligence talking to him. He said, I just got a flash. He said, you know that if we went around and we said we instead of I, do you know everything would work? That would mean we'd be helping one another. Right on, Kenny. Ain't it the truth? Um, you know, Kenny got his first taste of all of this. Well, he got the first taste perhaps from me because I've seen this light in Kenny's eyes all along. He didn't see it in his own eyes. And, uh, and, and then a friend of mine said something to him about if, um, my friend Zane said, if you, uh, 
Let's see, I wrote that down. As long as you know your God, you're God. I, I don't exactly even know what that means, but it meant something to Kenny because Kenny, when he was with Zane, saw some light in Zane's eyes. Zane was talking about what the possibilities were, and Kenny then started to look. This was about a year ago. Kenny started to look at the difference in his life between what he understood the possibilities to be and how he was living. If you know your God, you're God. And, all, and, and a year later, he just felt the sense that that hooked up with this revelation experience that he had. Uh, somebody once said to me, when I did something real sweet for a little child of mine, they said, when are you going to get that who you are is who you are? Oh, I said, oh, I'm not a great mother. I'm just sort of making that up. My friend said, when are you going to get that who you are is who you are? Wow. I chewed on that for years. And uh, did anybody ever say anything to you that you chewed on? You know, you can say wonderful things to one another. When you see a light in somebody's eyes, all you have to do is kind of wink at them. And uh, that can be the thing that changes their entire life. I I'd love to know. You know, I want to know what you know, too. This show isn't just about me telling you things. It's really about all of us telling each other things. I have a lot of written material, by the way, that I'm, gonna be, I'm willing to send you. I'd love to send you if you're interested about the things I'm talking about. And uh, get your pencils because later we'll tell you, you know, where to write for it so you can write it down. Um, I'd love to hear what you know about all this stuff also. Uh, I told Kenny, by the way, to carry a notebook because he's a receiver now. That's what I've been doing. For the last five months, I've been carrying this notebook, and that's what my written material is. It's the stuff I've been receiving um, since I've been carrying the notebook. You know, when I receive these things, does this sound mystical? Well, I guess it is, actually, but that's what's going on. Uh, when I all of a sudden something comes clear to me, I write it down. And as I've been editing this material, I realize, you know, I don't always know what I know sometimes. Sometimes things are very clear. And uh, yet, as I've been editing the material, it's like, wow, my higher intelligence, my higher self knows, and it's training me by just reading what it has to say. Um, be sure, by the way, to hang around with people who are on the side of your greatness. Uh, my friend Max, who's the producer of this show, uh, we've been working together on the material on the show for the last few months, the last month, actually, a little longer. For years, we've been working together, actually, but specifically on this show for a month. And... Uh, you know, hanging around with someone who uh, just tells you you're wonderful. I said, hey, Max, what if I, you know, uh, can't think of anything interesting to say today? And Max said to me, Suzanne, when you say, uh, that's interesting, is it? Well, as long as Max thinks so, it makes me feel wonderful. So hang around with people who tell you you're wonderful. Uh, also, say yes to everything. Don't go against things. You know, reality's here. So if you go fighting with reality, all you do is get tense and sick. Say yes to everything. That doesn't mean accept things you don't want. Say yes means love everything. Allow it to be there. Then tell it the absolute truth. We are terminally polite with one another, and that's not good either. We let each other be crazy. We let each other be sick. We let each other be miserable. And if we would just be in reality, settling back, we wouldn't be fearful if we would just ooze out with love, which is actually, if you don't know what to do, practice being loving. Whatever, if you don't feel loving all the time, put at the top of your list that it's necessary to keep your heart open. It's the secret to life. You know, it's more important than your job, than anything. Um, now, uh, once you know that you're an absolutely loving being, and by the way, I just discovered this myself. You, you come around and you discover it in the increments feels to me like I kind of got the final message just recently. And all of a sudden I could go, wow, I'm a loving being. And guess what a loving being can do? Anything. I can say anything to anybody. I don't have to say, mm -hmm. I can say, hey, you know, that sort of thing. I don't have to be fearful. What's to be fearful about? If I'm loving, it feels wonderful. What else is there to do but feel wonderful? So um, anyway, uh, I am... I, um, I think I'm going to go to some messages, uh, what we call messages from Central, a uh, little department we're going to have every week on the show. And um, these are your ideas. I mean, they're famous people's ideas, some of my friends' ideas um, about what, what, uh, what life's all about, you know? Central being the intelligence, reality, the, the times when these people have a clear flash. Well, the first one I want to read is from a book on the new physics called Space, Time, and Beyond, and it says, working toward a transformation in consciousness is the only game in town. Don't wait for the guru. 
the Messiah, the teacher, the second coming. Wake up and smell the coffee. You can do it now. Just be loving. That's me talking. Uh, the book says, there is nothing you can do to stop the expanding awareness, but you can help it come. That's what we can do together, by the way. We have a lot of work we can do together. It's no time to be alone anymore. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, and, and doing it for each other is what you might call service. I said we talk about service. Albert Schweitzer says, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, the only ones among you who will be truly happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. It feels wonderful to do it for one another. Um, but be careful. You can't hit people over the head. Joanna Macy said, I am going out and save the world. That is very boring. Don't do that. Tedious. That's the context for burning out. But when you experience it as being liberated into your true nature, which is inextricably interwoven with that of every other being, that's reality. We're all here together. Then your conceptual structure of reality and your response to it are inseparable. Then you're doing it for one another without having to do it for one another. I'll be a missionary. Uh, well, let's see. Can't do them all, so. Course in Miracles is a wonderful book. It's channeled, supposedly. Somebody's really listening, and it's a thick book that they got. And it's all about, um, well, a lot about Jesus who really knew. And uh, so uh, it says, after you kind of work on yourself and you sort of start being awake, when, when you're ready to go on, you go with mighty companions beside you. You will not go on from here alone. <sighs> wonderful. Good news. I like being with pals. Uh, and then Lex Hickson, in a book called Coming Home, home being this place where you're awake and you know, says, shared understanding moves deeper than private understanding, creating through words a kinship beyond words. Uh, and, and that remains dormant in, in people until kindled by the touch of an awakened person, like my friend Zane did for Kenny. Uh, you know, uh, the greatest of human potentials, says Jean Houston, is the potential of each one for empowering and acknowledging the other. Something so tremendous and so subtle is awakened inside that one is able to release the defeats and denigrations of years. That's what you can do when you wink at one another. And as I see it, says Pat Haslip, a little lady in Oklahoma who has nobody to talk to about this, so she writes me letters. Uh, the purpose of any contacts between individuals is for raising the level of each one's consciousness as a result of that contact. The purpose of our having relationships is to help each other become more conscious. Well, I got lots more, but no time to read them. So next week and the week, weeks thereafter, I want to tell you a couple of other things. We have another department here called the High Octane Hit of the Week. And I want to tell you quickly that uh, go see The Year of Living Dangerously. It's the best movie I ever saw. I went and spent money to see it twice. I've never done that before. Uh, there's a character in there who's me. It's Billy. You know, the reviewers missed this picture. Most of them did. I, all of them, I think. They, they didn't think it was too good a romance or too good a political story. Well, it's not. It's about what there is to be done. Uh, and Billy is a servant of the creation, as I think of myself. Uh, he knows that all there is to do is love what comes in his path. Has a little trouble when he is betrayed by his beloved and go see what he does. You'll get inspired by how he thinks and then watch it because we all have to watch it. It's dangerous out there. Uh, now, I want to give you some information. Uh, about what to do and how we can be together and how we can get on with this, you know? You really have some work to do. I intend to make it this lifetime, and I'd like the whole world to make it. So uh, if you're moved by what I'm saying, I want you. I'm collecting us. That seems to be part of my job. We're all here to evolve, but my particular job seems to be to find us and collect us. Don't ask me. I mean, that's just what happened. Uh, so if you want to watch the show, call me for showtimes. You'll see a card afterwards where my telephone number will appear. I love to talk personally. Uh, and call me for these materials. The Cosmic Fuel Pump is written material also. I I'm thinking I'm going to be a pamphleteer like the old Thomas Paine, only an updated version about, you know, campaigning for life and for love. And uh, call me to visit me, too. I'd love to meet you. And I want to leave you with an assignment. Uh, my friend Stephanie... Uh, was feeling miserable. Some guy didn't call her up for a date or something, whatever, you know, that sort of thing. And all of a sudden, Stephanie got this message. And the message said, um, I only have love in my heart. And Stephanie, for the rest of the day, went around saying that to herself. She got that that was true. And, and for the rest of the day, she went around saying that to herself. I only have love in my heart. Well, when you go around saying something to yourself all day, Either you're crazy or you have a mantra. <laughs> and a mantra is just something to focus your attention. You could almost say anything. Because our true nature 
Really, we were put here to be awake and to be loving. Only we're asleep and we forget. If we merely come to attention, if we pay attention to life, it all works. Well, you may as well, as long as you're paying attention, pay attention to a good inspirational message like, I only have love in my heart. You're, write this one down with your pencils. Write down, I only have love in my heart and practice it. Let me know how you do. And also, if you have any messages that keep you awake or any come to you, let me know. I'm collecting. I have a lot of them and I'll share every week. We'll, you know, we'll share one. We'll leave you with a good inspirational hit. Um, now, once you have all this, once you know all this stuff, once you have your mantra or, or whatever you do to, to keep yourself awake, I have a suggestion. Love one another lavishly. You know, we are very, very generous with our criticisms and very stingy with our affirmations. And we can do so much good in the world by simply telling the truth about the beauty that we see before us, simply by, you know, telling people just how wonderful they are, seeing the, the God within them, seeing the beauty within them, and just letting them know, sure, there's other stuff too, but if we just dwell on what's wonderful about us, the other stuff will just fall off us. It just won't matter anymore. That's the way the game works. The game does work. You know, it really does. And uh, as we start to tune in, we learn how to more align ourselves with this reality, which is love, which is God. God is just love, you know, it's just another word for it. And uh, so be real, real generous with loving one another and with letting each other know. So I look forward to uh, doing that with all of you. Come back next week. Oh, you know, I, I think it's time actually now to open. Yes, the old clock uh, <laughs> tells me that the folks are ready to uh, come into this year restaurant and get on with their own cosmic conversations and uh, making love to one another, which is all we do here. So see you around. Come on by. Call me up. Thank you.